next i am going to describe about the nocardiosis which is caused by nocardia bacteria they are also belonging to the actinomyces group of bacteria which include the gram positive filamentous bacteria so this is also a gram positive filamentous bacteria the causative agents i mean the uh, causative agents for the nocardiosis are the nocardia steroides and the nocardia brasiliensis these two are the filamentous bacteria and uh, they cause this nocardiosis which is a infection caused by nocardia as you uh, also know by the name itself so nocardia steroides and the nocardia brasiliensis brasiliensis you should remember these names now coming to the pathogenesis how does that nocardiosis occurs so nocardia you should know that the nocardia is a bacteria which is preferably found in the soils like we have talked about the actinomyces which was a mouth commensal which was a oral commensal nocardia is not like so nocardia is found in the soil okay so it is exogenous that was endogenous okay the actinomyces was endogenous because that was the uh, that was the uh, you know uh, that was the commensal uh, in the mouth but this nocardia is found in the soil so it is a exogenous so infection caused by nocardia will be a exogenous infection because it is coming from outside while the infection caused by actinomyces will be a endogenous infection because that actinomyces is present already in the mouth and from there it is causing the infection so that will be a endogenous infection and this nocardiosis will be a exogenous infection okay uh, now come back to the pathogenesis so nocardia is usually present in the soil now from the soil it can through the inhalational route it can enter into the lungs and when it enters into the lung it will cause the pulmonary nocardiosis but if there is any trauma to the skin then if and that trauma traumatized side get uh, inoculated by the uh, nocardia present in the soil gets contaminated with the soil uh, then uh, the infection caused by nocardia at that uh, skin is called as the actinomycetoma this is somewhat similar to the mycetoma caused by the fungi okay so it is somewhat similar to that but it is since it is caused by the uh, caused by a filamentous bacteria belonging to the actinomycetes group so it is called as the actinomycetoma actinomycetoma but that was which was caused by the fungi was called as the mycetoma okay so that difference should be remembered okay what is actinomycetoma and what is mycetoma now the pulmonary nocardiosis may lead to dissemination of the nocardia through blood and when it gets disseminated it may lead, uh, it may become life threatening and that may lead to abscess formation at various sites like the brain kidneys and the bone and muscles and depending on the involvement of the organs the clinical features will also vary that means there may be various types of clinical features may uh, occur with the infection when the infection uh, uh, with the when the infection of the nocardia gets spread it gets uh, spread to the different organs of the body so clinical manifestation as i described that clinical manifestation will vary so uh, clinical manifestation may occur due to the pulmonary nocardiosis the clinical manifestation of the actinomycetoma will be there there will be multiple swellings at that site or on the skin plus there will be discharging sinuses uh, and there will be you know discharging sinuses will be there and the discharge will contain some amount of granules as well so actinomycetoma is somewhat similar to the mycetoma or uh, uh, mycetoma of the fungi that's why the name also and plus there will be abscess formation now the abscess formation will have uh, its own characteristic features like pain fever etc these all features will be there whenever uh, wherever the abscess has been formed whether it is in brain or kidney or the soft tissue wherever the abscess has been formed the clinical feature will vary according to the site of the abscess formation so there will be various uh, there may be various clinical manifestations of the nocardia depending on that we have to uh, do the lab diagnosis also so depending on that we have to collect the specimen like for the pulmonary nocardiosis we will get a sputum for our examination and if there is abscess formation we have uh, got the confirmation that there has been an uh, abscess formation radiologically then we have to collect that first also under fluoroscopic guidance and then uh, we can also we cannot we have to collect the granules also from the discharge because that will be the best method to confirm the diagnosis okay getting the granules is the best method for the diagnosis of nocardiosis and actinomyces so 
the granules should be collected the sputum should be collected and the pus also from the abscess should be collected then we do the direct detection so in the direct detection we'll crush the just similar to the uh, similar to the actinomyces sorry actinomyces infection here also we will do a direct detection and just similar to the actinomyces we'll do a uh, uh, we will uh, wash the granules uh, in normal saline and then we will crush it on between two slides and then we will prepare a gram staining we will prepare a gram staining where we will be finding this gram positive filamentous bacilli and when we do the jaden staining when we do the jaden staining with 1% h2so4 please remember this 1% h2so4 normally we do the jaden staining with with 20% h2so4 but here it is characteristically 1% h2so4 so when we do the uh, uh acid fast staining with 1% h2so4 then this nocardia bacilli will show red colored acid fast bacilli now what is the interference inference sorry what is the inference of the 1% h2so4 that means it is less acid fast it is less acid fast when uh, uh, when the organisms are uh, jaden stained with 20% h2so4 they are uh, more acid fast okay so that uh, with the concentration of h2so4 we can say whether it is less or the more acid fast bacilli okay so the nocardia is a less acid fast because it is getting uh, the red color with 1% h2so4 only next what we can do is the culture of course so in the culture we have got the uh, culture on the seborrheic dextrose agar now this is a very unique feature we uh, we know that the seborrheic dextrose agar is used in the case of the fungi but here for the bacteria we are using the seborrheic dextrose agar this is a unique thing that we are seeing here okay so please remember this also because unique things are very uh, frequently asked in the uh, questions as well so the nocardia is cultured on the sda agar plus the bhi brain heart infusion agar at 37 degrees centigrade for 48 hours and there we find to see the creamy pink colored colonies which are adhered to the media firmly they do not leave the uh, media okay they are firmly adhered to the media and then we can identify of course by the malditoff and the vitek pcr etc so this is in short about the nocardia uh, if Uh, you cannot remember all these things then please remember these two things the direct detection part and the culture part okay this may be helpful that's all about nocardia